y'all, I'm Miss Stacy. Welcome to Stacy's Homestead. And today, we're canning pickled beets. So, I took my beets out of the garden. They weren't doing so hot. I had to get them out before the critters ate them all up. So, they're pretty small. I'm gonna do a fall crop. But we're gonna pickle them. So, I already cut and I already harvested them, boiled them, and peeled them. So, what you do is you boil them, small ones for like 15 minutes, big ones for like 25 minutes. Mine are all small, so I boiled them for 15 minutes, put them in cold water, and then the skins just slip off, really. Um, but oh, before you boil them, don't chop the root off or the stem, because it'll make your water bleed and you'll get red everywhere. Keep the, the root and the stem on when you cook them, that way your water stays clean. And then you chop them after you peel them and stuff. So I already got all that done and let's begin. <laughs> all right, so here's my tiny beets. So because they're so small, I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna cut them in half and then probably just like that. I probably don't even have to cut them. I could probably do it whole, but I like bite-sized pieces. So I'm just, I'm still going through all these, cutting them. I've been battling the birds and the bugs and stuff with these, and so they're pretty small. I'm sewing in a new crop for the fall. Hopefully those um, will turn out pretty good. I probably won't need to pickle those. Probably just can them. I mean, they'll be bigger, most likely. I always get a bigger around here where I live. I just get bigger ones in the fall. So, I probably won't need to do any um, more next year. I'll probably just do the fall crop next year because if they're really small, I just cut them in half. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to do the fall crop next year because in the, the summer crop, I'm always battling the critters, you know? Just learn your lesson, Stacy. Just do fall beets. So, but hey, I got enough to do a good amount of <clears throat> pickling. So, um, yeah, there's some that are just pretty tiny. But foods, it's, they're really good. I love pickle beets. Love, love, love them. I'm going to finish these up. And then we'll get to the rest. Alright, so I finished up with the beets. And now that I clean that mess up, I have onions here, okay? So I use red and white onions because that's what I had. You could use whatever you want. Chop those up. I chop them at moon size. Okay, now we're going to just make our brine. And the brine is a very simple brine. It's your basic brine. Everything is one to one ratio. So, we're going to measure that out. I think I'm going to do, um, we'll do four cups of uh, vinegar, four cups of water, four cups of sugar to start off with. Okay. So we got our four cups of water here. There's four cups in a quart, y'all, so it's, you can do measure by quarts too. So and we'll do four cups of four cups of vinegar. You can use apple cider. You don't have, it doesn't have to be white. I just like the white for the color. Okay. All right, now we got to put our spices in. You can do it without spice, it's good too. Just the sugar. Oh, let's get the sugar, huh? All right, so did you know that there's a difference between measuring in one of these and one of these for dry ingredients? Never knew that until I got older. I mean, that I don't think there's too much of a difference. So you can measure with this, this is for liquids. You can measure with that, it's just not as accurate. 
And then, but these are for dry. And, and you can measure the liquids in these too. Huh. I just learned that in a cookbook uh, about a couple years ago. I, I don't care too much. I do either one though. Alright, so we're going to do four cups. This is a cup of sugar, okay? Okay, I have four cups of sugar. And then we're going to get our spice bag. And put uh, just a few cloves in. Um, I think maybe uh, about 10 cloves, okay? Let's do 12 cloves. Uh, that's a good amount, a little palmful. <laughs> a little palmful. All right. And then we're gonna put a cinnamon stick. Nice little cinnamon stick. And then I like to add allspice, so I just do like another like palm of allspice. Not too much, allspice is strong, okay? Allspice is really strong, so just like clove too. Do about 10, the same amount of uh, cloves to allspice. About like 10 of them. 10 allspice here. All right. And then toss that in there, and then we want the, sh the salt. Now, when I can and pickle things, I like to use pickling salt or kosher salt because it gives a nice clarity to the brine. It won't cloud it up. Um, but you can use uh, you can use regular salt as long as it doesn't have iodine in it, sea salt and stuff. You can use that. All right, so let's get our kosher salt, and I'm gonna put about uh, two tablespoons of um, salt just I, I don't measure her you know me I don't measure too much a little pomple you don't want too much salt it's just enough to enhance the flavor okay that's it and then we're gonna bring it to a boil So while we bring our brine up to a boil, we're going to go get our watering bath pot and then start that and bring that up to a boil. Alrighty, so while we're bringing everything up to a boil, let's assemble our jars. I'm using pint and a half jars. Now, with beets, whether it's pints or quarts, you do 30 minutes processing time after it comes to a boil, okay? So, um, it's the same time, which is cool, but if y'all are wondering, with anything else, a pint and a half, you would uh, can for quart times, okay, for anything else, because it's larger than a pint. That's all. Okay, so I'm going to put red onion in the bottom. I like a lot of onion, so we're going to put red onion in the bottom. I'm not exactly sure how many jars I need, so... We'll just do like eight to start off with. If you need to. The onion is so good in this. I love onion. You don't have to put onion in it. Onion is delicious. A nice little handful and eat in the bottom of each one here. My counter. I really want to replace this counter. And with a big flat island. That's what I want. One day I'll do it. One day I'll just get the the urge to rip it out. I've done it before in my old house. I ripped out the, the peninsula counter and moved it. But this time if I rip this out, there's electrical line also I have to worry about. But um, I have to figure out what kind of table I want. I might just do a big kitchen table. A tall one, who knows. Anyways, 
let's continue to assemble our jars. And then I'll put the white onions on top. That's what I'll do. Purple onions on the bottom, white onion on top. Okay. How many jars? Two, four, six, seven, oh, eight. Right here. We'll start off with eight. Okay, my water came to a boil for my, um, I have tattlers in here and my tin plats. I always just put them in the boiling water and soak them, okay? Prepare our lids. Tin flats don't, they say on the, you know, everyone knows they say not to do it, but I do. Um, cause that's just how I was taught. All right, so what are we doing now? Oh, I'm stirring my brine here for a second. All right, so now let's get, we're gonna cover this up for our beets here. Let's just start putting beets in, huh? You can put a glove on when you're doing this because it'll stain your hands. And I just like to try to shake it down. Let's do a little bit of layering. I think I'm gonna layer the beets and onions. get a little bit more out of it if I do that. Try to put it in as tight as I can. Yeah, I'll put the um, onion in the middle instead of the top. That's what I'll do. I think I have about a little more than 10 pounds of beets here, even though they were tiny. I'm pretty sure I got about 10 pounds. All right, so now let's go ahead and put the onion in, in between, white onion this time, in between. on top. We're going to leave a one inch, or, you know what, oh, I don't know how, what's the headspace, let me think, I think it's half inch headspace for, yeah, half inch headspace. Just enough, and then we can always put more onion in if we need. I think I got it. Yay! Eight pint and a half. Add a little bit more. left and put it in this one. Nice. All right guys, so I have my little tamper here for fermenting. I'm just going to push it down best I can. And we're going to add some more onion to the top. Add the rest of this beet juice to my brine, my boiling water. All right, don't want to waste that. That was good. Good juice there. Okay, let's put a little bit more onion on top since we have the room. Mm -hmm. Add more onion. Okay. 
I cut two onions, two, two large red onions, and uh, two small white onions. It seemed to work out. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. All right. There we go. Everything looks even. Even Steven. Okay, looking good. This one doesn't seem to have as much in. Okay. Push that down again. Boop. Perfect. Now we just fill it with brine. Okay, guys, so we got our brine to boil. I'll leave my spice bag in there and we're going to start filling our jars up with delicious brine. Leave half inch head space, which is basically the first, the first ring. That's how I gauge. Your liquid's gonna settle, so we'll go back around and top it all off after we debubble. If you have any leftover brine, you can can that up and use it for another day. I think it's gonna be just right. I think I'll be right on the money here. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, jelly bean? Okay. Okay, let's debubble and then we'll go around and top it off. Now, I always misplace this thingy. <laughs> but if you do, just use a chopstick. So let's go around. Mmm, that brine tastes really good. It's pretty debubbled on its own. Ah, oh, I dropped a piece in my canning lid. stuff up. It's worth it though. It's worth it. If you can't grow it, then go to a farmer's market and get it because it's good stuff. Or if it's organic, you know. Even if it's not organic, I guess, if it's food and that's all you can afford, then get it. All right, so let's top all this off. Mm -mm, good. Forgot to say, tattlers need an inch head space no matter what. So I'm gonna use two tattlers. So I'm gonna leave an inch head space for those. See, I really didn't have that much brine. Look at that. It's just not even enough to can. Just enough for a little salad dressing, though. Okay. <clears throat> so, or you can put it in a bag and freeze it. Let's go ahead and. You don't have to use vinegar. You can use hot water to clean your rims. You can use both. Okay. 
All right, now let's put our lids on. Let's put our lids on here. I have two used lids. I'm one of those people that like to put a couple of used lids on my stuff. Our water's boiling here. That's good. short. Let's warm that one up real fast. Go we'll ahead and put our tattler on. We've got two of them. One, two. Fingertip tight. Yep. Tattlers, you can't use anything rusty. You can they won't do good. They don't seal, turn right. Okay. And then we'll put the rest on here. They're all fingertip tight, okay? Tattler's the same, because I have the Easy Seal Tattler's, so. You know, I like pickled beets way better than cooked beets, so if I do a fall harvest, I'll probably just pickle it more. So I'm putting my jars in the canner and we're going to do it for 30 minutes. Make sure there's at least one inch space of water over the top. You can have more but not less. Remember, you don't start your timer until after it's boiling. Okay? <laughs> Alrighty, so we're all done. Let's take them out. Looks pretty. They look pretty. They look super pretty. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. And they're sealing right away. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I love pretty. That's what I love about pickly and so it's so pretty. So pretty. And another plate for my tattlers. And then the tattlers, you take them out and you wrench them down. See, there's the tattlers. Let's wrench them down here real fast. Tighten it real good. You know, when you're taking stuff out, I see so many people tip their jars. <laughs> you're not supposed to tip your jars. Stuff can still get under it, so don't try not to tip them. There we go. See? Here's the Tetler ones. Looks really good. Just let them cool. Try not to let them cool too close to each other so you don't get flat sour. All right, guys, so that's how you can pickle beets, sweet pickle beets. And we'll just talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.